Drewsbury fans, welcome to Shopstar.com. My name's Johnny Drury. I'm alongside Salop correspondent Ollie Westbury. Well, the other side of a screen, not not next to, but um, with Ollie Westbury. After um, what's been a busy week, really, for, for Salop, defeat against Ipswich on Saturday. And then last night, it was the Carabao Cup. Uh, Burnley came to the, the Meadow for the second time in, in the last few months, um, albeit the first game was a friendly. Last night was the Carabao Cup. Shrewsbury bowed out, but... How did you see it, Ollie? A, a valiant effort against a, a good side who were going to be challenging at the top of the championship this season, really? Yeah, I think so. It's it's, it's been a very busy couple of weeks. Um, I feel like uh, busy week with big sides as well. Yeah, I feel like the the, the meadow is, is is like my second home at the moment. Um, I'm there that much, and the M54 is definitely my third home. Um, I'm up and down there for presses and so and so on and so forth. So, yeah, very busy. Um, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's obviously out of the Carabao Cup. I'm, I'm not sure about this competition anymore. I'm not sure if it's a blessing in disguise. Like with the amount of fixtures that they've got coming up, that actually a cup game and players having to. I'm not sure winning the last game, although it was important to get the first win on the board. Um, but it just means another fixture and the same players having to go again. I mean, Cottrell, Steve Cottrell made four changes, um, but obviously the other players still had to had to back it up and go again um, that played on Saturday and to be fair they started brightly in the game they came out with more intensity than they did at the weekend um, and yeah that they, they they started brightly um, had a had a good chance through Pennington to take the lead and and you know in the first half they kept Burnley completely at, at arm's length um, they had a good chance just before half time with a volley from Goodmanson and it's a fairly strong Burnley side. I mean, Ashley Barnes, Matt Lowton, you know, Goodmanson, you know, Peacock Farrell. These are names that have been around in the championship and part, some of them have played quite a lot in the Premier League as well. Um, that Nathan Teller came on at half time. So even though they'd made a few changes, Burnley, they've, they've got a deep squad and they've got they've got quality players. So it was always going to be a tough game for Shrewsbury playing Burnley. Um, and to be fair, I mean, Burnley did score just inside the second half, but... You know that they, they, they weren't. It wasn't like an absolute domination at all. It was. It was a fairly, you know, Shrewsbury. You know, defended resolutely. Again, they looked pretty solid at the back, or um, probably would like to offer more of a threat going forward. But I think Steve Cottrell said after the game, and I, I do. I must agree with him that if 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 Salop went out and attacked Burnley and tried to to to, to play him off the park then they'd probably have picked them off three or four nil, you know, so you, you can only play against what's in front of you and you have to go about the best way you can of getting the result. So disappointing to lose, um, but a valiant effort nonetheless, I feel, for, for Shrewsbury last night, a valiant effort. Yeah, it was a, a slender defeat to a championship side, but I believe there was a few sort of smattering of booze at the, at the Meadow at, at full time. What, what did you make of that? Yeah, there was, there was. I mean, it feels like the, 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 the booze are becoming more and more more common in football in general at the moment. Um, I I don't see how we can we can be booing. But after a one 0 defeat, to, you know, a, a battle in one 0 defeat to a good Championship side, it's, it seems a bit strange, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I I I I feel so personally. Um, I'd like to know. I'd like to hear from somebody. I suppose if they booed, why they booed. Um, I would have said that at the start of this week. The start of the week with the fixtures of Wickham, Derby, but definitely, and then getting Burnley in the cup. That was, for me, that was a, it was a free hit. It was a chance for some young players. I mean, it's not even like they picked the bet the strongest eleven available. They kind of rotated the the team around. They gave a few young players that have been on the fringes in Bloxham and Caton. Um, a crack and you know they they, they put 100 percent in yeah i mean I, I feel like that maybe they're a little bit harsh um on on steve cottrell um i know that there's you know there's questions about the amount of possession and the amount of the ball that they're having but they're playing against they're playing against three sides that are all that will all be going for automatic promotion and then they've played against um Burnley, who will be going for pr promotion in the champion, the championship. I do apologise, my cat wants to get in the video. She must be a Shrewsbury fan. What's what's the what's the cat's name? Nala. She's a pain Nala. in the ass when you do these videos. So uh, yeah, 
But yeah, but yeah, like you say there, a bit a bit sort of harsh. But what you've mentioned there, you know, I've got written down schedule on my list. And um, in terms of, you know, the games, I was at Derby West Brom last night and, you know, they were disappointed to go out of the cup. But I think more than ever, it's a blessing in disguise, really, isn't it? That it, Or it can be seen as that just because it's, you know, Championship and League One and League Two is Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday. But in normal seasons, there's probably... It's probably two out of four in the month where you play on a Tuesday, whereas now it's just every single Tuesday. Yeah, I, I mean, the, the run of fixtures for Shrewsbury, um, some of the players, Luke Leahy has a hell of a lot of energy and I do not know how he does it. I mean, he was he's like he's like a Duracell bunny. He just keeps running and running and running. And he was at it again last night. And I think I mean, he only played on Saturday and he, he probably didn't have his best game on Saturday, but he was bang at it again last night. And the players are just, they're having to just back it up, constantly back it up. And it, it's it's tough. It's tough. Um, so, yeah, I, I think a blessing in disguise. I mean, Steve Cotter wants to win, so he wanted to win that game, absolutely for sure. But I suppose looking at the bigger picture, um it's probably not the end of the world that they're out of the out of the cup competition. It means that they haven't got to play another ninety minutes in midweek, which is which will take it, it t- t- takes it out of the players' legs before they play again on a Saturday. Yeah, and then just in terms of you mentioned, they're just going about not dwelling <coughs> on the booze, but you know, Shrewsbury have picked up a you know a win over Wickham, a draw against Derby, defeat to Ipswich, will probably go on and win the title. You know, they're a very good side, and defeat against Burnley last night. It's it's. It's probably more difficult to judge Shrewsbury on them result on the, those run of fixtures. Probably, you know, it's, is, it, is it better to judge them in a, in a few months' time when things have settled down and and you know we're we're sort of ten fifteen games into the season? Yeah, I think so. I think I think I don't I don't I don't see us playing those sides and expecting to to dominate the ball. I don't, I don't see that that's um, the way that 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 the games are going to pan out. They have more of the ball, and I think that's to be expected. I think we could kind of make more of a judgment on Shrewsbury as a side, you know, with the fixtures they've got coming up when they play against the likes of Forest Green and Bristol Rovers at the weekend. You know, sides that that are kind of, you know, in and around Shrewsbury, um, but against top three sides, you expect them to have a lot of the ball. Um, so I think it's only probably fair that you know we we wait a bit of a bit more, a bit longer before we we kind of judge these players and we judge the outcome did the outcome so <clears throat> yeah I, th- I think we definitely need to give it a I would say that we probably need to give it a little bit more time before b- before we start to make judgments on, on what we think that this team's capable of because you know I've only seen them pl- play five or six games and you know I- I've been like quietly kind of you know like impressed by what I've seen I think it's it's at times it's tough, and I suppose what I, I I haven't I haven't I've kind of only just come into watching Shrewsbury over the last like two months, so I've come at it with very much a kind of fresh angle, um, and you know the, the, we'll see how they get on. I think it's important that we give them a chance to to play against sides that that are that are there or thereabouts around them in the table before we make a an assessment on how good how good we think. We think they are. And just a nod to, to Saturday on the road at Bristol Rovers, um, promoted Bristol Rovers. Got to be gunning for three points there, haven't they, Ollie? You know, there's no must-win games at this point in the season, but it'll be one that I'm sure Steve Coxwell and his players will be targeting. Yeah, well, I understand it's called the Weetabix Derby, apparently. That's what... That's what um, All right, OK. Explain. Uh, I don't know why. Um, <laughs> that's, your job. Should... <laughs> that's your job for next week's podcast. Um, Vish has just told me in the office, he said, oh, it's the Weetabix Derby. And I'm like, the what? Um, I think Lewis wrote a story on it a few years ago. It's a big game and it's probably the first time since uh, Shrewsbury played Accrington where I, I still believe that against Accrington, we had the better chances to win that game. Um, that you'd expect you, you can't we kind of going into that game um expectant and 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 kind of hoping that they're they're gonna have a little bit more of the ball and you know be able to to, to pass it around a bit more because you know <clears throat> Bristol Rovers came up last year. So so that's kind of where we're at. It's a it's a big game. Um sure as we could do with a goal, they could do with um and they could do with three points really. Um so yeah we'll we'll see how they go. We'll see how, how they go on that one. 